Hi everybody, welcome to the Cozy Rainbow Podcast. My name is Tammy, but my students know me as Miss Haddad. I'm Bianca, and my students know me as Miss Carrillo. We are both teachers or educators, and we created this podcast to help inspire kids and share their creativity. Today's episode is all about crystals. You're going to start off this podcast and I'm going to quiz Bianca here about crystals. On a scale of one to 10, go ahead and rank your knowledge. How do you feel like you're going to do on this quiz? I think I'm at a good three. I like crystals, but I don't know too much about them. Okay, well, I think, I think you might know more than you think, so we'll find out. Okay, here's my first question for you. True or false, the most rare crystal in the world is a diamond? False. Okay. And number two, my second question for you, true or false, a lot of computer screens use liquid crystals for their display. True. <laughs> okay. And the last question is not a true or false, it's a little bit harder. How do crystals form? That I'm not quite sure, but I think different crystals form different ways. <laughs> okay. I mean, you can't, you can't go wrong with that answer. So I am going to have the answers. I'll give you the answers at the end of the episode, and we'll see maybe... Maybe you'll be able to answer them a little bit more confidently, like with a 10 confidence for your answers. So in this podcast today, I'm going to talk about three different things. So hopefully you'll learn what crystals are or what different types of crystals there are, how crystals form. And um, there's kind of like a people sort of think that crystals can heal pain and depression. So we're going to talk about if that is true or if it's just a rumor. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about what exactly are crystals. A really basic definition, I would just say they're really pretty rocks, like little magical bits of earth. Um, All crystals have a shape or a structure, like how their molecules kind of form. And uh, we're going to talk about four different types of crystals today. They are kind of surprising that they're crystals, okay? So the first one is quartz. You know about quartz? Quartz. Yep, you love own quartz. quartz. I own quartz. Yep, okay, awesome. And then we have graphite. Did you know that graphite is a crystal? I did not know graphite was a crystal. And so for students who are listening, do you know where could you find graphite? In pencils. Pencils, <laughs> yes. So every student that's holding a pencil in any classroom, they're all crystal owners, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty fun. And then another type of crystal, salt. So we eat crystals, salt crystals. (laughs) Did know that one. Yeah. And the last type of crystal is snow. Like snowflakes are crystals. Oh. Or ice crystals. Yeah. So how do crystals form? They form when a liquid cools. So for example, we're talking about snow crystals. Snow crystals, they form from water vapor. So it's when water vapor cools, they form a beautiful snowflake. Now, have you ever lived anywhere where it snowed? Nope, lived in Vegas my whole life. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did. I had never seen a snowflake either until I until I went to college. So I would have never known that snow is actually crystals, but they are. Okay, and when we're talking about salt crystals, do you take Epsom salt baths? I do all the time. Did you know that you can use Epsom salt to make your own crystal? I did. You did? Yes. I know a lot of fun science kits that come with them. Okay. Have you ever done it? No. I've always wanted to try, but I've yet to try. Okay. Yeah. So I'll tell you how you can make your own Epsom salt crystal. So all you have to do, it's super simple. You can get half a cup of Epsom salt and half a cup of hot water, not boiling water, but like almost boiling water and food coloring for like whatever kind of color you want to make your crystal. And then you basically combine all those ingredients and you stir, stir, stir the hot water until it cools and it'll form an Epsom salt crystal. Okay, and then another type of crystal, or I'll give you another example of how crystals can form. They can form from magma. So I believe it's emeralds and rubies. Yeah, emeralds and rubies are the ones that form when magma cools. So there's another example of a solution cooling and forming a beautiful crystal. The last thing we're going to talk about is crystal healing. Do you think it's real? I do think it's real. I think crystals hold vibrations, so I'm not surprised that a lot of people think that they heal, but I also know that it hasn't 
been proven, I don't think, or at least I haven't read into it. Yeah, like, you know, I've definitely tried to put a piece of rose quartz on my forehead before when I have a headache, and of course I feel better with a piece of rose quartz on my forehead, but I... I'll tell you, I'll tell you if it's real or not. Okay, so many people think that crystals hold some sort of magical power. Um, you are right when you say like they're what you would call like vibrationally perfect because it's it has to do with how they form. So they all form like these really cool, um, perfectly geometrical, like symmetrical, vibrationally perfect uh, molecular composition. Timing crystals are used with electricity and watches to ensure the correct time. Have you ever heard of a timing crystal? I have not. You haven't? Yeah, I haven't either. No. So I found out that. So it's basically like when you combine it with electricity, it makes sense that it would like tick, tick, tick. Yeah. Like at a perfect rate because of the, the vibrations. Reiki crystal healing. You've heard of Reiki, yes? Yeah. Okay, Reiki crystal healing. It was invented by a Japanese doctor named Mikao Usui, and he was also a very spiritual type of doctor. Basically, Reiki healing, what they do is, it, di it did not always involve crystals. So when Reiki healing first began, it was mostly just like hand positions, and it started off really small, and then it kind of basically grew into this huge thing. And now people use crystals with it sometimes. According to Healthline.com, Reiki can help you manage your symptoms of depression or chronic pain and your well-being. Reiki is thought to boost your mood and relieve your depression. Not surprised. I've gotten some Reiki healing myself and I definitely feel different afterwards and much better. Yes, yeah. So the thing about Reiki is that there is not a ton of research out there, like scientific research to back it up, but... I mean, when you ask most people who have tried Reiki, they either say it didn't do anything for me or they say that it helped. So Reiki overall is very safe and it has no bad side effects. So, I mean, for people who are looking for any type of alternative medicine, it's definitely something to try because there's just absolutely no risk involved. That's amazing. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to tell you today about crystals, and I got this information from rarest.org. So it has all the rarest items. So I looked up the rarest crystals, and I, I actually did look up how to pronounce these, and there was no real definitive answer, so I'm just going to do my best here. Um, the rarest crystals in the world, they're actually tied. So we have taphite and pudratite. So both of these crystals are actually named after the people who found them. They're both like, how would you describe them? They're very clear, almost like selenite, and the other one's almost like clear quartz. They're very pretty. Yeah, they're both like these like pink looking crystals. So you guys can look this up at rarest.org if you want to see the crystals that we're talking about, or we can post them on our Instagram too. We should do that. Okay. So the reason why these crystals are so rare, both of these crystals have been found less than 50 times and they're, yeah, so they're very valuable. One does, pud pudratite does not have a specified value. And then taffite, it says it's, um, over $2,000 per carat. Wow. Yeah. So so not diamonds then. So not diamonds, yes, which actually you are leading us to our next section here. So we're gonna go back over these quiz questions. So number one, now we know, false. The rarest diamond in the world, I mean, no, the rarest crystal in the world, it's not a diamond. Diamonds are, I mean, we'd say that they're rare, but... Not. They're very pretty yes. and can be expensive, but not rare. Yes. Yeah. This one, I was hoping that maybe like you could use your, anybody who's listening could use like prior knowledge to figure it out. If everybody, I mean, a lot of people get married and a lot of people wear a diamond ring on their finger. So, I mean, I would say that they're not rare because they're kind of everywhere. Yeah. They're available at different price points and <laughs> almost accessible, accessible all over the world. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then true or false, I actually didn't say the answer to this one on the podcast, but I was really surprised when I taught this lesson to my class. Um, they actually knew the answer, and it is true. Crystal, liquid crystals are used for the computer screens. Not surprising after hearing that crystals are used in watches to keep time, so very impressed with the different ways that crystals can be used. Yeah, I actually didn't know any of this stuff until I started researching it, so there we go. And then, okay, <clears throat> Miss, Miss Bianca, Miss Carrillo. How do crystals form? Crystals form when liquids cool. Very <laughs> awesome. Okay. 
So my question for you is, what's your favorite crystal? So my favorite crystal, I really like Angel Aura Quartz. Um, a yeah, beautiful crystal. It, yeah, it is beautiful. It's basically like this, like a white kind of clearish. It looks like quartz, but then they like, I, I looked up how they do it before. They like dip it in something, mm -hmm. in a special rainbow shiny material. It's a beautiful crystal. Yes. And I love this crystal so much. Actually on the Cozy Rainbow blog, I took a picture of it and I posted it there because I made an art tutorial on how to draw a crystal. And so I drew a picture of my favorite crystal. It's amazing. My favorite crystal is one that I love since I was a kid, which is amethyst. Kind yeah. of a basic crystal, purple, very popular. But I don't know what it is about it that it's, it holds a special place in my heart. It's a very beautiful. Yeah, crystal. amethyst is like definitely one of the most like mystical, magical crystals for sure. The Cozy Rainbow Creative Challenge for June 22 is you must create an art piece that features a type of crystal and a 3D shape. You can also submit a picture of an Epsom salt crystal if you chose to create one at home. For more rules, please visit our Creative Challenges page at www.cozyrainbow.org. For games, activities, and more, check us out at www.cozyrainbow.org. If you have a burning question we didn't answer, you can contact us by submitting a voice recording on our website or sending us an email at cozyrainbownb at gmail.com. Okay, everybody. Thanks, thanks for, for listening. listening.